Cool, I'm a Mac. And I'm a PC. Ready to get started? Well, not quite. First, I gotta download those new drivers, and I gotta erase the trial software that came on my hard drive. Sweet. Then I've got a lot of manuals to read. Let me know when you're ready. <laughs> Actually, the rest of me's in some other boxes, so I'll meet up with you later. Some of that is still unfortunately true today, but what exactly does this Mac vs PC conversation look like in 2023? Which machine is faster? Which one is more efficient? And more importantly, how is the experience different? To answer this question, I actually reached out to Apple and I said, hey, can I borrow one of those new M2 Ultra Mac Studios? They actually responded and sent out an absolute beast. So this is their fastest Mac Studio. Whereas a Mac mini will top out at 10 CPU cores and 16 GPU cores, this thing can be juiced up to double the CPU cores and almost five times the GPU cores. And that is basically what we have here. 24 CPU cores, 76 GPU cores, all on a single chip. This one also has 128 gigabytes of memory, which is shared between the CPU and GPU. And we also have four terabytes of storage. Those specs get this thing close to $7,000 and maxing out the memory and storage, you can actually push this thing close to nine. So 7K, you know, that is like workstation PC pricing. Someone spending that much money on a desktop system, they want a system that can chew through basically anything. But I already have one of those. And it's this, my super overkill liquid cooled workstation, which I use for absolutely everything. You can think of it as a Mac Studio M2 Ultra, but just a PC. It's packing an RTX 4090, a Ryzen 7800X 3D, 32 gigabytes of DDR5 memory, and six terabytes of NVMe storage. The entire thing is liquid cooled as well. I've got two radiators in there, five fans, a custom fan hub, metal tubing, and a low pressure profile pump and completely custom cables. And that brings me to my first point. Oh my God, that thing is heavy. Uh, the Mac Studio, you just unbox it and you plug it in. And at the end of the day, computers are tools. There is a lot of value in actually just unboxing something and getting it up and running as fast as possible. Now, of course, not every PC build requires as much work as my one to assemble, but even the easiest of PC builds out there require a bunch of research and compatibility checks. They are a far cry from the Apple experience, which is just unboxing it and pushing on the power button. Even when you get to the desktop on both machines, there is still some truth to that Apple commercial from 2006. On the Mac Studio, I had one software update to do, and that's it. For my Windows system, I had to install Windows myself, update the BIOS, then set the correct memory speeds, then install a handful of drivers, and also the stack of individual Windows updates, which all require a full restart for each one. But maybe it's all worth it when it comes to performance? I mean, I really hope so. So the Mac Studio with the M2 Ultra comes in at about $7,000, and my custom PC build on the other hand is about five and a half. Now, a lot of that money has been spent on premium water cooling hardware and a pretty expensive compact case. Basically, if you don't care about those things and having a really compact PC, you can actually get the same spec, the same performance, just in a much larger form factor for about three and a half. This comparison though, I think makes a lot more sense. You know, it shows what you need to spend to get a similar form factor machine at least. And there is a lot of value in that portability. Now I wasn't planning on doing any synthetic benchmarks for this test, but the new Cinebench just came out. So, I mean, of course, we have to try it. So let's start with the multi-threaded CPU test. This fires up every CPU core and my PC build gets absolutely assaulted. Now, to be fair, I could have spec'd this build with a 7950X, which has double the CPU cores. That would have landed us just slightly above the M2 Ultra. But to be fair, I really don't need that much CPU power for my particular workflow. It would as well be pushing the bounds of what I could call in this tiny form factor. But even when we compare the single threaded CPU performance, the Mac Studio is still a decent bit faster. And yes, single threaded CPU performance is something that I do value. There are lots of effects and functions in certain apps which can only be executed on a single core. So that's a pretty interesting difference. Also interesting though, the new Cinebench actually has a GPU benchmark. And you know, this is something that I did not hold back with on my personal PC. The RTX 4090 that is in that thing is the fastest desktop GPU that you can currently buy. So I was expecting my personal PC to absolutely dominate the Mac Studio here 
And it does. In fact, we're looking at a four times performance difference here, which is massive. In other words, at least in Redshift, which is the renderer being used, you could get your work done in a quarter of the time on the PC or render out four times the amount of frames. What I'm mostly interested in though is video editing, particularly in DaVinci Resolve Studio. I've been using this for a few years now and every time that I've upgraded my primary machine, I have noticed a nice little performance bump. So this is a project that I completed a couple of weeks ago ended up doing pretty well. Some of you might be familiar with it. I will say though, in the areas on the timeline where I have like super heavy color grading and particularly a lot of denoising, I am still seeing that kind of hitching and stuttering when I hit the play button. So PC and Mac Studio, they have, you know, pretty similar timeline performance which is a bit of a shame. You know, I was hoping the Mac Studio would be a little bit different here, but seems like they both can't really keep up. But something that I was really interested to see on the Mac Studio was how fast it can stabilize a clip. So video stabilization, think of like a handheld clip, clips that are shaky, or maybe like the panning motion just isn't as smooth as it could be. And my PC build can stabilize this clip in about six seconds, which is, you know, really, really quick. The Mac Studio though can do it in 1.6 which is just mind-blowingly quick. Now you might be thinking, you know, four and a half seconds, big deal, you know, that's not a really big difference. It's actually a massive difference because, you know, when you hit that stabilize button, you can't do anything else with your PC. You're kind of just sitting there waiting for it to finish. So on the Mac Studio, to just be able to hit stabilize and for it to basically be done before you can like blink and look for the next clip to stabilize, yeah, that is actually a pretty big workflow speed increase. Something else that I was pretty interested in was the mask tracking. So every now and then there'll be a specific area of a clip that you'll want to make adjustments to. I don't do this very often, but it is something that does require a bit of time to process and track. And yeah, about the same performance between the two here, about a second quicker on the Mac. What about video exports though? You know, how fast can you get a working project like this into something that is watchable on YouTube or something that you can proof watch? Uh, surprisingly, the Mac Studio is actually a little bit faster than my PC, which is really, really surprising. Something like a 5% difference, but still the fact that it even beats my powerhouse of a PC build is honestly pretty humbling. I did also quickly play around with Final Cut Pro, which is Apple's own editing software. And yeah, as you'd expect, it runs even faster than Resolve. For example, I can have flawless playback of an identically graded clip from that previous project with pretty heavy denoising. There's just no hitching at all. Learning this software though does lock you into using Mac hardware only, which is something that I'm not really keen on. Something else I was really keen to check out was Blender. Now this is a 3D modeling software. I'm not gonna pretend that I do a lot of work in Blender. Uh, my skills are pretty basic, but occasionally when the project calls for it, I do actually spend quite a lot of time in it. And you know, Blender is super heavy on the GPU. So as a bit of a demo, my next video actually has quite a lot of Blender in it. And this is a really quick animation. It's just two models, about three lights, and it goes for about 105 frames. So it looks a little something like this. And yeah, if we were to sit here and render it out, we need to render every frame individually. Now my PC build with the RTX 4090 absolutely rips through this render. It's like no challenge at all. The Mac Studio, on the other hand, takes about twice as long, but it gets worse and it's kind of painful when you enable denoising, which is, you know, kind of essential for these renders, unless you just want to crank the ray count up a lot, which in effect does just make your renders even longer. When you enable denoising, the Mac Studio just doesn't cooperate. Like the renders just take so, so much longer. In the time that it takes the Mac Studio to completely render one frame and denoise as well, my PC build can do like seven or eight frames. Something else that is definitely worth talking about though is gaming, you know, because this thing has a pretty decent GPU in it. I haven't tested out the game porting toolkit yet, but I did test out a few games that are, you know, kind of natively supported on Apple in the way that you can just download them and click play. So the first game that I tried was CSGO and this was a mistake. Again, it's basically just download and hit play on Steam, but in the background, it's running on OpenGL and uses the Rosetta translation layer to do so. It can run at about 100 frames per second at 1440p low settings, which doesn't seem too bad, but the input lag is horrible. Even after manually disabling mouse acceleration in the terminal for my G Pro Superlight, there's just no way that this is even close to a playable experience. I then tried Shadow of the Tomb Raider, which also uses Rosetta in the background, and while the game looked really good and the average FPS was pretty decent, there was constant stuttering and hitching every few seconds. The last game I tried was Fortnite. 
and the experience here was actually not bad. Average FPS was over 200, no stuttering, mouse input actually felt pretty decent too. I even managed a couple of wins. There was the occasional texture glitch, but other than that, really no issues. Now, of course, I'm not gonna pretend this is stellar performance. You could get similar numbers here from like a mid-range PC, but it does at least give me a bit of hope, especially because hooking up a high refresh rate gaming monitor to this thing is really, really easy. It has an HDMI 2.1 port, and that can technically drive a 4K 240Hz display. Speaking of monitors, this is my first experience with the Pro Display, and I was really hoping not to like this thing, but yeah, unfortunately, it is really, really good. Seeing my timeline resolution, for example, at 5K resolution is just something else completely. I mean, I was personally satisfied with my dual 4K setup, but this has honestly put those to shame. It is still an IPS panel, but I mean, the colors are brilliant. The contrast is super, super punchy, way better than my 4K IPS panels. But yeah, mostly it is that just like unreal pixel density, which is so nice to use. The biggest complaint I have about this monitor though is it is capped at 60 hertz which is a bit of a shame. You know, timeline doesn't feel as snappy as I would like. Like it's a little bit snappier on my 4K 160Hz panels. The image quality, the overall experience, I do prefer this display to edit with, but I would love a 120Hz ProMotion upgrade in the future. But I actually have another complaint. The Mac Studio, even with the M2 Ultra, which is the top spec, most power hungry chip they have, is too quiet. Like this thing is unreasonably silent. There's no point in me showing you any sound clips or sound tests uh, because even at full load, you won't hear anything from this machine. At most, there is like a bit of warm air coming out of the back, but there's no like noticeable fan spin up at all. Now on one hand, that is super impressive. Like to have a machine that is this small, this powerful and have like basically no noise, that is just kind of next level. But at the same time, you know, this is the fastest Mac Studio. I wouldn't have minded if Apple just let the thing cook a little bit harder, let the fan spin up a little bit harder, make just at least some noise at full load. At least then you can offer a little bit more cooling potential, a little bit more power draw, and thus faster renders. Part of this though, and something that I do like quite a lot, is how efficient Apple's hardware is. Their desktop idle power consumption, for example, makes my new PC look like a piece of trash, and the CPU cores are mind-blowingly efficient, even compared to AMD's latest 7000 series. They somehow pull less power and offer more performance. The GPU side of things though, that's Apple's current biggest challenge. Performance per watt on the M2 Ultra is actually lower than my 4090 in Redshift. And again, because of how quiet this thing is, the GPU seems to be capped at around 110 watts. So I would personally love to see Apple push their GPU performance even more aggressively next generation or the generation after that to really compete with the PC side of things. So look, I actually love this tiny little machine. It is super incredible. And as someone who does use a lot of Apple products on on a day-to-day -day basis, it was actually super nice to have my desktop system as a part of that entire ecosystem. Like the fact that I can open notes on my phone and then have that straight away on my desktop was pretty nuts, but also then to record a video on my phone and then to just airdrop that to my editing timeline in like five seconds, that is something that I'm super jealous of. And honestly, I'll probably never have that with a Windows PC. And look, aside from gaming, which, you know, let's just forget gaming for a second, as a mini workstation, the biggest difference between these two devices is the GPU rendering performance. I think things like video editing, photo editing, even audio work as well, those things are slightly better on the Mac Studio. And I think that's where the lower priced Mac Mini and even the M2 Pro really, really shine. But GPU rendering, Redshift, you know, Blender, there is a massive difference there. Even if you're someone like me who dabbles in a bit of that every now and then, you are going to be seriously handicapped at the moment on a Mac versus a PC. It's the difference of getting your work done in minutes or hours. Now, Apple are actually letting me hang on to this for a little bit. I do have to send it back, but for the meantime, I am gonna be putting it to some serious use. And I'm looking forward to using that 5K Pro display as well. That thing is an absolute treat. But in terms of full-time production use, yeah, I won't be switching from my beast of a mini PC anytime soon.